Well, this isn't going to be a talk about rolfing. It's basically my mystical experiences <clears throat> I've had with Ida. And the theme, since you're yoga people, and yoga means union, the theme is going to be around wholeness and union. We're going to kind of meander around about that. Now, <clears throat> is everybody know a little bit about rolfing? If they don't, I could say a few words. Will you just say a couple words from your perspective? I know a little bit from what Anne said. I don't That's, know very much. Okay, well... <laughs> Well, Rolfing was founded by Dr. Rolf, who got her PhD in 1927. Ida's her first name. She's a woman. She was forbidden to go for a PhD by her father. So she's probably the first feminist, you know? And her PhD was in biochemistry. No lightweight. This was a very brilliant lady. She was a very powerful, charismatic lady, like a Zen master. No nonsense you people would be sitting absolutely straight. I doubt if these outfits would be appropriate. <laughs> You'd be sitting very straight with your hair piled on top of your head, looking very prim and proper. And you would not say one word. It was just power poured out of her. When she smiled, you thought heaven at you. She thought you thought heaven opened. And when she was not happy with you, it was black and bad. <laughs> so anyway, her whole thing was she believed a man or person, woman, I'm just going to use the word man so I don't get confused. A man or a human being was built around a line. Like some people believe a person's built around a mind, a gut, different kinds of things. And now this line, she found to be what it's called, she found it, I won't get too long in the story, but she found the gravity line. And gravity is a universal force. So she says a man is built around a core, a gravity line that's a core that, so basically she was about connecting the small field, that's us, to the larger field of gravity or the universe. Uh, that would be a form of union. This is getting pretty esoteric. Basically, just to get down to the practical level, people come in, lay, day, lay down on a table, and you mold the body with your hands, like uh, very fancy, sophisticated, expensive deep tissue work, you know? And so you build this line, and that's about it. Is that enough? Sure. You lay yeah. down on a table, you get, you know, pushed around. Okay. okay. Sounds nice. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> well, she used to also say, what, how did she say? She said it to us, and we thought we understood. She says, you, you do not know how beautiful rolfing is. We thought we did. You know what I mean? People would sit in class with crying with tears going down their face. It was just so marvelous. Sorry, is the point of it to create alignment? Or posture. posture. Okay. To put it that way. So you have good posture. Like... <laughs> You help with bowed legs, swayed backs, you know, like models all have swayed backs, you know. Runners are always skinny and have their shoulders up here. Stuff like that, you know. So here's the part you probably like, part of it anyway. She studied tantric yoga for 10 years with a guy who, at the age of 19, his teacher sent him away. She studied tantric yoga. Now, in those days, she, said she went to yoga camps. Not these nice cruises, I take it. Hmm, you we know? Didn't go on a nice cruise. We didn't do a nice yeah, I don't think this was I don't think this was the style. I think it was pretty tough. Anyway, so how she I'll just talk about how she got started, just one little story, and I'm only talking about it because we're gonna talk about wholeness. So she had a couple kids and uh, at some point she wanted them to learn piano. So there was a piano teacher who had arthritic hands, but and couldn't teach anymore. So I just said, I'll tell you what, I'll fix your hands if you teach the kids. So she probably started with yoga postures. You know, it sounds like that was in the beginning. She was never very this forth. This is like the early 1900s? Uh, in the 30s, probably. Because okay. she got her PhD in 27, so I don't think she had kids yet then. She was always very not forthcoming about any of the stuff, you know. 
Basically, she didn't remember, kind of. She says, how do you know? You just get going, and then, you know, people want to know stuff. Yeah. <laughs> focus on the past, right? Yeah, she did. And besides, she didn't like talking about anything personal. It was all Rolfing, you know. Mm -hmm. That would be, you would not want to be questioning her, you know. This was not allowed, so of course. this is what you gathered over how much time? What? The information you have about her is what you personally gathered over 20 years, 10 years? Just by being around her. Long time. I've been around. I'm an old time rolfer. Oh, I know. So you gathered this information because you're saying she didn't. She wasn't very forthcoming. You couldn't. Sit down well, these stories are known. These are not secret stories. You know. Okay. So this stuff's kind of known, and there's more stories. I'm just going to touch it a little bit, only because. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> she probably started with yoga postures, and right from the beginning. Now, this is a key point. She always worked with the whole body. I mean, right now, people don't do that. You know, if you go to the doctor and you have a... They work piecemeal. She started working with the whole body day one. So whether she, somehow she got that idea. It was just boom. That was called holistic healing, you know, back in the 70s before it became... Good business, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so now also, I suspect since she had 10 years of, you know, tantric yoga, I think by this time, she also not only, so we're talking about wholeness, but here we have just the person she was working in wholeness. I suspect, from watching her work in later years, she knew how to merge with the person, too. So that's more of a union. We're going to keep talking about wholeness and union. Union. Some of them will just be little ones, and then we have the grand one, the silent, you know. So, because <clears throat> I used to watch her work, and she'd be talking to the secretary, crank it away on somebody, and then all of a sudden everything would change. And she'd be right there, and then it'd be over, and she'd go talking to the secretary again. So she would go in and out of it. She was very active, you know. I mean, she always had a lot going on. It was not, you know, she'd be... She'd pick on you for a while, and you know, three more people she would be doing, and where's the secretary, and you know, friend send three people off to the hardware store all to buy screwdrivers, you know. Okay, so now here's another yoga story. This is in my, I'm gonna jump years, so this is in the 1973. I'm in my first class with her. And so she brings in a demonstration person. Turns out he's a yogi in a loincloth. I didn't know anything about yoga in those days especially, you know. But, I mean, loincloth and whatever, you know, okay. He's probably a guy from India or something like that. has been doing yoga 50 years. Now, what was really interesting here, I only remember one thing about it, was that the back bend, you know, a standing back bend, if you watch most people, I'm just going to exaggerate it, they, they don't go like that, they go something like this. In other words, there's a break in the lumbars. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets their range by breaking in the lumbar somewhere. So this guy probably could stand on his head, you know, I mean, from whatever. By the time she got done with him, he was like this. That's it. That's the posture. No further. Now, what she was doing, though, was opening his core. She was not going for the flesh, the radical movement. She was going for the maximum length of the core. The, a man is built around the body, that gravity line. She was making the line the maximum length. So she was lengthening his core. Most of us have a compression model, so you want to lengthen the core. <laughs> 